Well, hello, beautiful people. Welcome back. Welcome to my favorite makeup from December of 2020. And this is a part of my normal month end favorites. For those of you that are new here, I like to do them every single month and kind of recap the month before. And I wasn't sure because obviously December and then quickly, like next week, I'll be putting up my favorite makeup. So stay tuned from 2020 overall. I like to do a high end and a drugstore version. When I was thinking about and debating whether or not I should do this video, I was kind of, you know, going back and forth on it because technically, you know, some of this makeup will be in there and you know it's just kind of like is it a waste of time is it not like are you guys going to enjoy it but ultimately I decided obviously obviously um we're sitting here to do this video for two reasons number one these videos for me like if you're kind of wondering what the um the roundup or my favorite favorite products are going to be like the roundup video for the year um I decided to do these ones because they're not necessarily the same like just because you've seen it in a month end favorite doesn't mean that it'll be in the roundup because as the year progresses obviously you know new favorites emerge or my, my skin changes or like wow I really love this highlight but now that I've tried this one like you know some, some things really just change throughout the year and um, so for me they're kind of two very different videos I like to keep that one as like an encompassing you know year-long video where I go through and I, I really for myself kind of compare and contrast various things I've tried throughout the year whereas this video more specifically is kind of a recap of makeup that I've tried in the previous month and so I didn't think it would be fair to take away you know that recap or even an update on a lot of these products because you might not otherwise you know get to hear me talk about them and if you're thinking to yourself Paige you're putting way too much thought into this. Well, <laughs> you're obviously right, um, but that's just who I am. Like, I'm, I'm very much so an overthinking kind of Libra, and so, yeah, I like to just really clarify, like, what you're gonna get um, as far as the video goes. This one's kind of a recap, and also, too, just as, like, a little intrigue, if you're thinking, like, oh, I don't know if I want to watch this video. This lady talks a lot, which I definitely do, um, but if you're kind of like, hmm, what's going on? Allow me to build a little suspense for you. There is a product in this video. I'm not sure if it's gonna be beginning, middle, end. I don't know where it's gonna end up because I just kind of pick at random, um, but there is a product in this video that if you have been here for say the last mm, I don't know like six seven eight ish months um it will surprise you because this is a specific item that I tried I tried multiple times and I hated it and now guys I really really like it so uh yeah stay tuned for that I have an explanation I have more information so stay tuned and obviously this just adds to like the sweet nectar that is these videos the sweet nectar that's a jump uh but you know what I mean like I couldn't talk about something that I previously hated in a favorites video because you'd be like Paige how did we get here? Like, I don't I don't see the trail. I don't see the footprints in the sand, um, if you will. And uh, yeah, so I have to do this video. I have to sit down. I'm just going to buzz through some favorites. Some of them you know, some of them you definitely don't. And we are just, uh, we're going to get into it. Of course, before we get into the video, I got to introduce myself. This is going to be brief, so don't skip ahead, okay? Don't be rude. It's very hurtful, very painful to my heart, soul, and my analytics, okay? So don't do that to me. Um, but, you know, just want to introduce myself. For anybody that's new here, my name is Paige. This is Seeking Alexandria. Welcome to the channel. I do put up three new videos a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and they usually go up right around like 7, 7.30-ish a.m. my time here in good old northern Michigan. And then also, I'm going to make this real brief. Okay, real, real brief. Over on Instagram, if you haven't followed me yet, I would greatly appreciate it if you would do so. Everything is linked down below. I put up a ton of content over there. We've got makeup inspo, makeup reels, makeup tutorials, plus size fashion, regular artsy fartsy photos, all that kind of stuff. And all of that gets uploaded to the feed of Instagram. And then I'm also hanging out all the time in the IG stories throughout the day. I like to hang out in my office. We do like unboxing. Unboxings, PR unboxings, talk about what videos are coming. I do polls. You guys, you know, go with me on walks. We talk about my dog because she's adorable. Um, you know, it's just kind of like my my day-to-day -day life behind the scenes, what's coming to the channel, what's going on. It's really just a fun place to get to hang out with me, hang out with each other. And uh, yeah, I'm trying to hit 10,000 over there. So please take a second, follow me. Everything is linked down in the description box. As will, by the way, everything that I am wearing, all my makeup, um, the sweater. This is from Target. If I can link it, I will. This is from Skims. Uh, obviously, it says Skims on it. Um, I don't know if this will if this is restocked or not so if it is obviously I will link it and also my necklace too um it's in my Amazon storefront favorites if you don't know I have one of those and I'll have that link down there too it's just again as the name would indicate all of my favorites uh, I have jewelry skincare hair care random things nail care like all the things you could imagine um just all of them listed in my storefront so I'll make sure that's listed as well and yeah with that let's go ahead and let's jump into the video all right so the first two things we're going to talk about are actually both on my lips right now and this is all I'm wearing I'm wearing a lip liner and um um, this gloss and this gloss for me is kind of the placeholder for the one that I wanted to talk about This is the gloss nonetheless from Lunar Beauty and it's beautiful too So it's not like it matters, uh, but this is the Lunar Beauty gloss in the shade aura And I am freaking obsessed obsessed with Lunar Beauty glosses. You guys know this I've talked about them so so many times my favorite one that Manny has come out with to date is actually the shade Zaya And that one uh, he re-released with his recent Eternal Eclipse, you know little collection and um, That one is in my purse. <laughs> so I had to use this one 
one. It's the only one I could find in here without having to go and rummage and like, you know, take an additional 45 minutes because y'all know my purse is a disaster. Anybody that knows me in real life, you can vouch for me when I tell you. <laughs> it, it, is, it is a wasteland where everything just goes to die. Um, it, it, it's the truth. And I'm not trying to dog on the shade of this. It's actually a really, really beautiful, kind of like a nudie, pinky kind of color. And I really like it because it's such a universal shade. But I feel like when you compare it like to Zaya and his other shades, um, it does kind of get left in the dust because it doesn't have like the same, I mean, obviously it's still like super juicy, super glossy, but I, those ones, because they have like the built-in sparkle to them, they just, they pop that much more. So I think because of that, you know, they just get a little more attention, which is totally fine. Again, that's the one that's currently living in my purse. So I do it too. Um, but his glosses overall, like just formula specifically, they are so good. They're so consistent. And I know I've said this a thousand times, but Manny's glosses are just so special. They're very, very unique, lightweight formula that I think is kind of a hybrid between like a gloss and a lip oil because they're so lightweight and so, um, like when you think of like that awful, thick, sticky gloss, his is the exact opposite <laughs> of like everything that you would hate in a gloss. And that's why I love it. It's just so thin. You literally can't feel it, but you still get like that beautiful shine. It's just, it's absolutely amazing. So highly recommend these. Again, I'm wearing the shade Aura. I love Zaya. I love all the shades he's come out with. They're fantastic. Um, so I wanted to mention that. And then in addition to that, the other item I am wearing today, this one, <laughs> okay, if you watch me at all here or Instagram, um, you know that I have been wearing this almost every single day for like the last month. And that would be the M Cosmetics lip liner. This is their soft blur velvet lip liner in the shade Teddy. And this color, this texture, this application, this everything, it is absolute perfection, my friends. I don't know, like, oh my, like, look at that. It's literally, when it, when it says velvet, it means velvet. It's just so like glide. Oh my God, I don't want to waste it. I probably have almost none of this. Yeah, this is, oh, this is all I have left. <laughs> you guys, I have this much, like a solid inch left um, of this lip liner. I need to get on Pronto and order another one because this lip liner, it's just everything. And I'm going to do like I just did with the gloss. So kind of go with me on this little bunny trail. I'm going to take you through the, the page mind forest right now because this is the best way I can think to describe it. Um, we've all used lip liners, right? That are like thicker in texture. Like they might have a beautiful color and you know, something like that, but they have like this thickness to them or like this dryness that when you drag it across your lips, it's just like, Ugh, and it just, it sucks. Or the worst, oh my God, oh, it gives me shivers. The absolute worst is when you put on a lip liner and you get it on, you get it exactly how you want it. And then you go in with like a lipstick or a gloss over top of it. And the two, like they meet each other and then they just repel. Like one of them's too dry. The other is too um, like nice and glossy or hydrating or whatever. And they like ball up. They make your lips look all crinkly. Oh, I absolutely hate that so much. But all of that is to say, okay, all of that whole picture thing, whatever that was that I just painted, this is the exact opposite of that. So when I tell you that it layers and it layers perfectly with other products, that is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the way that not only it drags across the lips, not only it um, it just like blends itself out and it works with all my lips, literally all my lipsticks, matte or hydrating or my glosses or whatever. It is just the most versatile, most well layering formula I have ever tried. And it's just, it's so beautiful. Like the way that it settles, the way it glides. Like I literally do not have one bad thing to say about this and I'm absolutely obsessed. I need to buy another one and I'm going to pick up, I think a couple other colors. Hey, that being said, if you guys have a favorite, like if you've tried this and you really love a certain color, um, drop it down below because I'm currently accepting applications for the other shades because not only am I going to repurchase this, I am so going to repurchase another shade, two, three. I think they've got, what, four or five different shades? So, hey, who knows? I might end up with all of them. Um, but yeah, this one from Teddy, if you were looking for like the gateway nude brown liner from them, oh my God, this is so good. Highly, highly recommend. All right, so next up, we're gonna talk about a product that I started using when I was testing out Taylor Wynn's favorites, which if you haven't seen that, I'll link it up here. And by the way, this is a series that I do on this channel. So, you know, just a little self plug. If you are not familiar, I will link it down below the other versions of that I have done because I have not only testing Taylor Wynn's favorites, I think I have five total. Taylor Wynn, Teresa is Dead, uh, Jessica Braun, Samantha Ravindahl, and Kathleen Light. So there really is a little something for everyone, depending on the creator. I try to mix it up a little bit. Um, so yeah, just be on the lookout for that. I'll link it down below if you're looking for something else to watch. Anyways, getting into what I actually want to talk about today, I want to discuss this little guy. This is the Elsie Jewels, and this, I'm sorry, it's from Elsie. It's one of their jewel pots, I think is what they're called. And this is in the shade Pearl. And this is absolutely freaking gorgeous, you guys. I use it on my eyes today. For me, the thing that I love the most about this is actually how easy it is to work with and kind of play around with the level of intensity. Because what I found is that on a day like today where I'm going, you know, a lot more natural, I don't really want there to be a ton of intensity on the eyes. I can just lightly take it, kind of tap it on, and you can get that level of lightness. Or if I'm wanting to the flip side of that, like a really super glam, you know, intense kind of eye, and I really want the reflect, I want it to pop, 
on camera, whatever, I can also, you know, take this, build it up, and it has such a beautiful way of glistening back. And even more than that, like when you build up the intensity, it has, and I can't really describe it other than the name Pearl is perfect. I guess the best way to say it is that no matter, you know, if you want a lighter eye like I did today, again, I didn't want it to be super intense, um, I'm able to work with it, but I still get that beautiful pearl-esque kind of finish. Just has like that little something different and that sophistication I have just grown to love so freaking much. And too, when Taylor was talking about this, she had mentioned how great it would be for like bridal makeup just to get that really nice, um, you know, that pop, that gorgeous look, but still have that sophisticated feel. I keep saying sophisticated and it's it's like the only word that I'm, I'm really, get, you know, getting to come off my tongue right now, but it definitely gives that kind of feel, very bridal, very beautiful. Very much so, by the way, gonna last you a long time because a little goes a long way and the pot is, is quite generous for how much you need to use. So highly recommend, highly, highly recommend. All right, so next up, I'm gonna talk about this little guy who somehow snuck in and stole my damn heart. This is from e.l.f. and it is their Wow Brow Volumizing Brow Gel. I have it in the shade Brunette and this brow gel is so freaking fantastic. And I just keep asking myself one basic question. How did I never know that this existed? Because up until like a month or two ago, I didn't even know that this was a thing, at least not to my recollection. And I, guys, I'm just absolutely in love. I think it gives you such beautiful fluffed up lashes. It lasts really well. Now I will say it's not the most long wearing that I have in terms of brows, but for the price, for the fluff factor that you get out of it, like the oof, oof, like your brows, bitch, they just look tousled. It's what I'm wearing right now, by the way. And it's just such a fantastic, fantastic product. I have to mention it. I think it's like $2.99, $3.99, you know, right, right in that, you know, elf range. I just think it's such a great product, especially for anybody that's wanting to um, get into brows a little bit more. Like for me, it, it, getting into brows, I'm just going to put it right here, okay? Getting into brows is like, it's something you have to come to on your own terms, okay? All of us have went through our own brow journeys, I will call them. Mine was, oh, mine, mine was rough. Um, I went through like a really thin brow phase. I went through a thick ass brow phase. Literally, they were like this thick. I wish I was kidding. Uh, I went through many brow phases. And obviously, I love where I'm at now in my brow journey. I think they look nice. They're fluffy. They have like a more natural fluff to them. But getting to this end, okay, getting to the end of everyone's brow journey, it does take time. And it takes going through and testing different formulas and deciding if you like a brow gel, if you don't, if you like fluffy brows, if you want them laid flat, if you like, you know, that nice laid out, like super structural look, if you like them to be fluffy. Um, you know, just everybody has to go through and kind of answer those questions for themselves. And so obviously this is one that I found once I was getting into brow gels and wanting that fluffed up voluminous look. And I just really had to give it a nod because I think out of a lot of the brow gels actually that I have tried, it's just really great. So again, if you're looking to, you know, kind of get into a different type of brow, if you're wanting to experiment with brow gel um, and you want to do it without breaking the bank, but you still want some quality, I would definitely, definitely look here. This is fan freaking tastic. Highly recommend. So good. All right. So next up, while we're on the topic of e.l.f., I am going to get into this e.l.f. Halo Glow Setting Powder. And this, by the way, it looks like this because I literally use it every single day. I think that this, um, very similar to the e.l.f. brow gel I just talked about, this one really took me by surprise because I was so, <laughs> I was so freaking nervous. I actually think I talked about this in like testing new e.l.f. or something like that. I'll link it up here. Um, if you haven't seen it, I, I actually done several videos on e.l.f. and drugstore lately. So make sure you're like scrolling back on the channel. Make sure you're up to date because I have just been loving on some drugstore lately. But anyways, getting back into this powder, you guys, when I heard that this was a halo glow setting powder, the first thing, and I mean ping, the first thing that came into my mind was, oh God, no, because anybody like me that has oil and texture, what are the two things we don't want? We don't want to emphasize and we don't want to look more oily than we already are. Talking for me, you guys, the first time I went to use this, I was literally like, huh, huh, just, just, uh, huh, huh, huh. like I was, <laughs> I was so dead against it. And I know you're thinking, Paige, you're dramatic. Um, also, yes, I am. But like, seriously, I was so, <laughs> so dead against this from the start. But there was something within me, like deep, deep within me that was like, Paige, just give it a go. Give it a try. Okay. If, if you hate it, you hate it. And it wrecks your makeup look for one day. Who cares? But you need to give it a shot because when you swatch this, and I'm going to give you guys the best that I can here. When you swatch it, you get just the most luminous looking. Can you see that? I might have to build it up a little because it's on camera. But when you swatch this, it gives you um, like, like such a beautiful refinement to the skin with a hint of shimmer. And so going back to what I thought it was going to be, it wasn't like that at all. I was envisioning something like a regular powder infused with shimmer and it was just going to, and it was, was going to be a whole problem. But with this, they actually did such a great job blending in like such a nice, lightly refined kind of finishing powder texture with a luminous glow, like a light, very, very light luminosity that kind of comes through the skin. And so for me, I've actually been really loving uh, taking this on my, what is this? My Sigma F25. And I like to very, very lightly, and I'm going to show you actually how much I use. Like I'm talking the teeniest amount and I will take it and just lightly kind of 
of brush it right in this area and kind of blend it down my cheek and then inward like this. And what this does is it gives me the most light level of um, like blurring to the skin. It definitely helps if I'm having like a crackly kind of moment, if things are looking dry. If I just want like a nice light smooth, this is so beautiful for that. Again, it just kind of helps blur everything together. It gives you a nice, I don't think on camera it's gonna show up, especially right here because I'm wearing highlight, but it just helps really give your skin like that nice healthy kind of glow that you're needing, especially when you're kind of having that issue. And by the way too, a little bit of this goes such a long way. This is still the original original cap that I dumped out for the video that I shot and I have used it day in and day out and I've barely made a dent in just the cap that I poured. Speaking of powder, since how we're on the e.l.f. one, I'll go ahead and talk about the next one as well and that would be the One Size Ultimate Setting Powder. This is from Patrick Star and by the way, I keep it like this on my vanity because I've used it every day just like that one and this setting powder for me has been such a fantastic, fantastic find. I feel like it really does blur the under eyes so beautifully like this whole area right here. It has such an amazing um, like I want to say velvety blur to it like it looks soft it looks matte but not too matte not not like a hyper like oh god like it looks crunchy kind of matte it's more of just like you're nice you're set and it's so so unbelievably smooth now I will say there is one exception with this powder like one thing one one pairing that doesn't work for me and that is with a thicker formula concealer like the um, the one from makeup forever that I've been using their ultimate coverage one um, it's a beautiful concealer and I really like it but pairing it with this one it's just too it, it just doesn't doesn't set well under my eyes. And truthfully, because I've used it with so many other concealers, I don't think it's an issue with the powder. I think it's an issue with my under eyes and the way that they, like they naturally, especially with a thick concealer, they tend to kind of like suck in. Kind of like how, I'm, I'm sure everybody notices this, okay, it can't just be me, but kind of like how sometimes you notice that like your ass just eats underwear, but it's only, <laughs> it's only like certain underwear. Is that weird? Is that just me? Like you'll, you'll be sitting there and you'll put on one pair and you're like totally fine. Like I'm great. No atomics today. But then the next day you put on this other pair and where'd it go? Oh, bitch, it's a thong. Like a boy short turned into a thong. Yeah, I don't know if that uh, that explanation like works for anybody else, but it kind of like that, that's how my uh, my mind envisions it. But the moral of my story, okay, if you take nothing else, um, this is a beautiful, fantastic powder. I really love it. I love the finish, but I do prefer wearing it with like thinner consistencies, like the um, the Benefit Boing Cakeless Concealer, my Clinique Concealer, which is the one I'm wearing today. Anything like that that has more of a thin, workable type formula, I feel like it works better with. Um, but yeah, that's just you know that's just me. I don't know. I don't want to like force an atomic wedgie on anybody else's under eye. All right, so now we're going to get into the shocking product. This is the last product I'm going to mention, and it is by far the one that I was just like, oh my God, like I cannot believe after everything I went through with this, I can't believe I'm going to talk about it and actually enjoy it. And you guys, it is none other than the NARS Soft Matte Complete Foundation. I have it in the shade Light 2 Mont Blanc. This is actually a foundation, fun fact. I didn't just do a first impression on it. Oh no, oh no. I did a three days, three ways foundation video, which if you don't know what that is, there are some foundations where I test them out and like they, they really just kind of get under my skin. Like I get so, so confused. They're, I'm just in such a conundrum with them. And I end up doing what I call a three days, three ways foundation review where I test them out as the name would suggest for three days. And each day I try something different, whether it's a different powder routine, a different primer, a different application, something like that. Like I try to mix it up and see if I can make the foundation either better or uh, make it last longer, like whatever the issue seems to be. And with this one from the very beginning, I have always loved the way that it looked on first application. Like it had such an amazing, amazing coverage to it. I felt like even the, like the lightness, like the thinness of the foundation itself was such a winner, but I could never make it look good on my skin. It always looked thick or chunky or it broke up really, really bad and like fast throughout the day. And there was just nothing I could do. Like when I tell you, even just in that video, the video has me trying it three different ways. I have tried this a bajillion ways. And finally I was just like, I'm done. I gave up months ago with this thing. I'm over it. I'm going to put it in this pile. One day I'll declutter it and it's going to be done, right? So fast forward to a couple of weeks ago, right? I've had it sitting here and it just every day it's like looking at me, just mocking me like, <laughs> and it's really bothering me. Like I've tested a lot of foundations in my time and I mean a lot, obviously you know this. Um, And I, I feel like this one, there, there's only a handful of them that really taunt me and this was one of them. I was sitting there thinking one night, I was up super late because I couldn't sleep and I was thinking about how much my skin has changed and how like, you know, during the summer I was super oily and like all of, you know, that sort of stuff and what comes with that? Well, more powder and things don't last as long. And somehow through that whole thought process, I ended up down a bunny trail of, hey Paige, now that your skin isn't as oily and you don't have to rely so heavily on intense powders, you should give this a try. You should see if you can make it work. So the next morning I get up and I'm just like sure as shit, like, yep, this is gonna be the, th the day I'm gonna get into it. I'm just, ooh, ooh, bitch, I'm staring her down, making her round, okay, per SpongeBob. 
up and I am just so getting into this foundation and like rediscovering what I fell in love with. So I pick it up, I put some on my sponge and you guys, it was absolutely beautiful. Like not just the first application that was always beautiful, but I mean the application was amazing all the way through. I lightly powdered it, which we'll talk about that in a second, all the way through to the end of the day. And this foundation looked so, so damn beautiful. And when I tell you, I threw a damn party. I was so excited. And by party, I mean I, I ate Doritos and talked about it um, with my mother because I was so excited. Like, I mean, isn't that what everybody does? Um, but seriously, it worked so beautifully, like in all seriousness, I was able to take this foundation foundation that literally never worked for me, like did not, bar none, I could use a little, I could use a lot, I could set it, I could, you know, set it lightly, whatever I did, it did not work with this foundation. Now, I do want to really quickly mention what I think was key with this. Now, again, not only like fine-tuning what I wore it with, but I think the key with this one is you can't be over-drying it. Like with me, with my skin during the summer, my skin is just so, so oily that like I said before, I have to really rely on powders and I really have to press it in and I have to be a lot more aggressive. But but right now my skin is not nearly as oily as it was then. So I'm able to get away with lighter powders and like a lighter overall application of everything from foundation to primer to powder just to everything. So for me for the last two weeks, and I'm not saying, you know, you have to use it, whatever, because this powder you can't get right now, which should give away what it is. But I have been pairing this foundation almost exclusively with this powder. This is the Chantecaille, which one is this? The Chantecaille Perfect Blur Finishing Powder. And this is the one I talked about it in my testing Teresa is Dead's favorites, which I will link up here. And in that video, I do talk about how, which I heard from Teresa, you actually cannot purchase this right now. I believe they are coming back out with it again in 2021. But as of right now, I won't be able to link it for you, but stay on the lookout because when it relaunches, boy, it will be a sweet day. Okay. Let me tell you this powder on its own is just absolutely stunning, but more specifically pairing it with this foundation, I think was the perfect move because it has the thinness. It's not a bulky, you know, super stripping, super drying, mattifying, anything like that kind of powder. And I think if you are going to use this um, this foundation specifically, that is key. And obviously you have to be mindful, you know, not to over apply the product and stuff like that, which I had tried that previously as well, because a couple of you mentioned, I want to say in the comments of that video, like, hey, don't apply so much, try less, try less. And I was down to try and like just a couple of drops, okay? Like just a peek, peek, try and trying to make it happen because I seriously loved the way it looked, but I couldn't make it work for me, like for like long wearing for all day. But with this one, what I would say, um, and again, the things that I've had the best success with, be mindful of the powder you're using if you set your skin, um, making sure that it's, like I said, not too matte, not too foundation powdery, like if it's that drying matte kind of foundation powder, definitely stay away from that. Go with something that is thinner, something that is very, very lightweight. This is like arguably one of the most lightweight powders I've ever tried, and it is absolutely stunning. The pairing of these together is gorgeous just on its own. I'm not saying too that my entire love of this product like hinges on this powder, because that's not the case at all. I have been able to make it work with other finishing powder, like other other light powders in general, but more specifically, I wanted to mention that one because the pairing is just so beautiful. So if you have anything with a light texture like that, a lighter finishing powder, that might be the way to go. But overall, you guys, I have just been obsessed with this. Again, I've tried it multiple times, multiple different, you know, things and combinations, but I have just been loving it for the last couple of weeks. And a lot of you too, even over on Instagram, you've noticed like my skin has just looked so great. And in the last couple of weeks, if you said that, or if you thought it, it was this foundation, it is just so great. And uh, yeah, I've been really, really loving it. So I wanted to put it out there. I wanted to kind of correct the record, if and you will. And obviously we'll see how long this lasts. You know, once my skin gets more oily or if something changes, that very well might change as well. But for now, <laughs> for now, I am so happy, so in love. And it was really great for me, honestly, to be able to pull out something like something that was just, ooh, it was kind of like when you get that popcorn kernel like stuck in your teeth, like getting that out of there, like getting it freed. It just, it's like the most amazing feeling. Why am I in here with all the most like odd comparisons today? I don't know what's going on with me, but it was very much so like that. Like it was just the relief, the sweet relief that I needed in my life. Anyways, you guys, that is it. That's officially the end of my month end favorites. I hope that you like this video. Be sure to let me know all of your month end favorites down below. Do you still like these videos? You know, kind of the month to month update type deal. Also let me know too, if you're as excited as I am for our year end favorites, which they will start, I want to say next week when you're watching this. So be on the lookout for that. And you might not know this if you're new here, but I take my year end favorites very, very seriously. Like I go through and I kind of pick through, like I don't, I don't just talk about everything that I've talked about all year. Okay. I'm not one of those boring people. Okay. I like to really recap. I go deep. I dig. I like, I really get into the textures and the application and like all the things I love and why. So if you're excited for that, okay. If you're excited for my year end trip down memory lane, all my favorite things, all the topics, guys, I have so much to say. Can you tell? I've already started making
making lists. Like, that's where we're at in this life. And I am just, oh, <laughs> I am so here for it. So make sure that you comment down below. Let me know you're excited. Let me know your month end favorites. And make sure you're subscribed. Turn on your post notifications so obviously you don't miss the videos when they go up. Also, make sure, you know, while we're on the topic, make sure you have followed me on Instagram. It will be listed down below, as will everything in this video that I've talked about, like I mentioned. Guys, I think that that's everything. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Please don't forget to have an amazing day, night, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching this, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. How do I look? Do I look like perfectly poodleicious? Because I feel like I do. Still sweating. Still sweating profusely, by the way. What's next? What is a neck? Next. Okay. Oh, yeah, this one. Well, that was rude. All right, so next up, we're going to talk a little bit. We're going to talk. We're going to talk. But you didn't know that, did you?